Fred Masterson with Athlon Outdoors out here on a beautiful sunny day in Arizona. We're down the range shooting the new Springfield Echelon pistol. Fantastic gun. Out here having the time of my life shooting with Rob Latham. <laughs> Rob, it's always a pleasure to shoot with you. That's and we had a few extra minutes and I wanted to pick your brain a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, as much as you might roll your eyes and, and kind of growl at this, you are a legend in the shooting world. I mean, undoubtedly, you, you've that won. This means I'm old. No, you've won a couple things. You know, you're kind of good at couple, this. A couple things, yeah. So I was wondering if you'd <clears throat> share with me and share with the folks that are watching. You know, kind of what what got you into this. You know, what drove you to to really take up what you do. Well, becoming a professional shooter was a pure accident. But the lead up to that moment which I'm not sure that moment was really defined, but in the beginning, you know, I was born in Mesa, Arizona. That's where we're at right now. I was a member of this club when I was 10 or 12 years old. Um, even though we didn't shoot her very much because this was so far out of town, we didn't go this far to go shooting. Yeah. Uh, and of course I was introduced like many people are by my dad to shooting. And at that period of time, uh, my dad was infatuated with pistols. We had rifles, shotguns, and we hunted and we did all those kind of things. But the reality is, uh, we were a pistol family. So by the time I was eight or nine years old, I was very competent pistol shooter and we'd go on camping and hiking trips, uh, even just day trips and we'd go out and we'd go shooting. I mean, that's, that's what we did. Other families did other things and we went shooting. We had a picnic, okay, well, we're gonna go out and go shooting for a couple hours. Uh, it was easy to do here then, didn't have to drive very far. So that's how I began in the shooting world. Uh, and I became infatuated with pistols in particular, all firearms, but pistols in particular. Uh, and as I grew up and got older and uh, bigger, started shooting bigger and bigger guns and finally got to a point where my other side of my life was always athletics, sports, track, uh, wrestling and basketball. And that's all I wanted to do. There was a time where my focus in life was all the sports things and then recreation thing was shooting and then as I became a better athlete and better at competing and 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 performing that kind of just flowed into the shooting world and then I learned about competition shooting by reading the magazines you know there's no internet there was no other source there were no shooting shows on TV there were four channels anyway when I was a kid and at that point everything we picked up from shooting was either personal experience talking to people or reading the gun magazines so uh, we didn't buy all the gun magazines, but when my mom went to the grocery store, I always went with her just so I could read everything. So I read everything, and I don't care which magazine it was, I don't care who wrote it, and I would try to get my mom to buy one or two of whatever I wanted the most. But the reality is I read everything. So I knew every author, I knew every story they ever wrote, I still know Masada Ub's middle name, and he doesn't know how I know that, but it was in an article he wrote, you know, 40 years ago. And things like that uh, is, is how I got the information. And then I started learning about the combat shooting. And that changed my life because I took my competition experience from basketball and track and things like that and put it into the competition world. So then all he wanted to do was shoot a match. But there was a catch. In this area, the group that ran matches only ran them on Sunday. And at that period of time, my mom was like, you're not gonna go shoot matches, you're gonna go to church. His mom, it's only once a month. One Sunday a month, they had a match up in, at the Cactus League. Well, there were actually more than that, but yeah. he didn't tell her that. But in 1978, December of 1978, one of the clubs held a night match at the Mesa PD range. And that was Saturday night so I could go and shoot it. And I went and shot that, and that's the moment that changed my life. I quit, I didn't care about basketball anymore. My senior year after high school, all I wanted to do was get a job so I could do what I wanted. Yeah. You know, living under her roof, I need to respect her roof. But I had to get out then. So I moved out and uh, got a job, and every cent was spent on ammunition components and 
making it a really long story, but then the translation into how it got bigger than that was pretty simple. My dad knew Mike Dillon. Yeah. They'd done articles together for uh, flying magazines for air progress and things. And that, I knew Mike when I was very young and that they were doing this combat shooting thing. So that led one thing to another and then I started shooting some of the monthly matches and I had a certain you know, skill towards it. Just maybe a little, huh? Yeah, a little bit of skill. And, and I did very well early on. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't care if I did anything else in my life but work and shoot on the weekends. Then I met Brian Ennis and he went to a big match in 1979 or 80. I think it was 80. And when he came back, we were just club shooters at that point. Yeah. We'd shoot the local matches, right? And then we'd hang out and talk about it. You know, shoot a match for two hours and then talk about it for three weeks until exactly. the next one. And uh, he went to the Steel Challenge in California, came back and said, uh, said, oh, look what happened, man. I won $700 in cash and I won seven different guns. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you can get things doing this? I said to him, and these, I'll never forget these words. How do you think I would have done? He said, oh, you've done horrible. Oh. So he says, you can't, you can't miss as much as you do. And that lit a, f a fire under me to learn how to shoot. Not just learn how to shoot, but to get better. And that's what really started it. And then Dylan Precision came on and sponsored me. And in the beginning, they gave us a loading machine and components for a 1,000 rounds a month. Talk about being in hog heaven. Oh my I mean, gosh. I just couldn't. This was before that. It was a couple hundred rounds at best a month because I was casting bullets. Oh my goodness! And the next step after that was he said, "Well, hey, you know, you guys are getting some good promotion here. You guys can uh, have all the ammo you want, right? But you have to load it. It's all components, which was fine because you couldn't buy what we wanted. Anyway. Oh yeah. Then I won a national championship, and that changed everything. And Wilson Combat came in, and they built me a gun and sponsored me. And then in 1985, Springfield Army said, hey, we would like you to shoot for us. And then in 1989, I became a, a employee of Springfield Army, and I've been an employee and haven't had a real job since 1989. Real job? A real job. Now, I work really hard at what I do. Oh, I have no doubt. But I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it doesn't have its it benefits. I mean, I'm shooting. So what you're saying is you may whine every now and then, but you won't complain? That's pretty true. Yeah. I mean, bad days at any job. When you go out and shoot poorly, uh, there's nothing more frustrating, and I can't leave it at the range. Yeah. Some people have that ability to walk away from it, leave it from I can't. Yeah. I, I think about guns all day long. I dream about guns. I dream about developing guns. I dream about shooting. I dream about teaching. So for me, I mean, shooting is basically all I am. There's no more. I mean, if you took shooting out of me, I would be nothing. Well, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm something that, that I'm always curious about, and I'm sure everybody else on this planet is curious about. If you could give a couple tips on, to a new shooter, um, maybe somebody who's considering entering competition, or hell, even just a brand new shooter, you know, what would you, what would you say to them? Don't try to have fun. Too many people think that they're going to try to go out there and have fun. Your, your first few times competing isn't going to be fun. You'll walk away and you'll want to do it again. You will not. It's like you won't. You can't wait to get out there and do it again. But don't go with the goal of making it be fun because the process of of being fun is making an excuse for your failures and, and say, well, I made a bunch of mistakes, so I'm just out here having fun. I can't have fun just shooting the gun anymore. Yeah. My hands hurt. I have arthritis, I've had surgeries, everything physically hurts. There's a cost to shooting a million half rounds in your life. I'm not complaining. I'm just stating the facts yeah. that my fingers are like this because of shooting. There are other people like that too, but I wouldn't change it. If you told me that when I was 62 that my hands were gonna hurt, if you did this all the time, I'd say, okay, that's the cost of it. So I get it. So don't try to have fun. Go out there with the goal to be safe. Just get through it and follow the rules and get through it safely and then go back and analyze what you did and figure out how you can shoot better. Because when you shoot better and perform better, then it's fun. But at the beginning, it can't be. Yeah. Because it's, it's nerve wracking to walk up there and like you, because you think when you walk the line, you think every single person stops to look at you. Our brains just were wired to believe that the world is focused on me. And it's not. 
people might be watching because they're trying to learn so that they can do better than you do or learn from what you do. But they don't really care what you do. Yeah. But our brain said, oh my God, I'm up there. So I've never thought of myself as standing on a stage in front of people. That's not how it ever felt to me because I've been in competition, many kind of competitions before. And to be honest with you, that prep time before running a, 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 a race and track yeah. was way more miserable oh, than anything yeah. I've ever experienced in shooting. Yeah. So the nerve buildup was completely different, but maybe that's because I'm a much more competent shooter than I ever was a runner. It's gold, absolute gold. So, so, so taking it down the next line is develop your skills. Yeah. No matter how good you think you are, you are not a good enough shot. The weakness I have in my career at this point is that I've never become a good enough shot to make me happy because I still make mistakes. I've never shot a perfect match. I'm not sure I've ever shot a perfect stage. I may have shot some strings of fire that were as good as I could have done them. Yeah. But perfect, you gotta remember, there's, there's, in most of the shooting we do, there's a time component that faster is better. So there's no maximum score to get that way. Yeah. Which is why the kids today are faster than I was, you know, when I was their age. And, and the development should be that way. It shouldn't go backwards. So go out there, be safe. Remember what you're doing, and then it becomes fun. Trust me, there is nothing more fun than shooting really well. But it's only fun when it's over. <laughs> so it's an investment in time. True. You know? So just block that off. I think of myself as a robot. When I'm actually in the process of shooting, I try not to be emotionally involved in it. I don't try to relax. I don't try to do a lot. I use tons of tension. I, some of the things I would tell you training-wise, you would say, I don't understand that, and that's okay. Um, but when you're done, for, for that standby, they say, load and make ready. I'm gone. I'm a machine at that point. And when they say unload and show, show clear, that's when the goofy Rob comes back out. Well, Rob, it's been a fantastic day, to say the least. It's been um, fun. Any I, day at the range is a I good know, day, I know, right? but this has been a lot more yeah. fun. I mean, getting to hang out with you, get to shoot with you. The Echelon pistol is, is, a, is gold. I mean, it's a fantastic Boy, I hope gun. everybody likes that thing as much yeah, as I do. I, well, I've shot it quite a bit. Um, it's it's a phenomenal gun. Yeah, I think we got a, go, a real winner on our hands yeah, here. Yeah, well done, well done. Well, folks, we've got a, another video on the gun that you can look at. It's in great detail. Got several articles on the gun, so I hope you can check them out. But until we see you again, stay safe. We've got Springfield's new Echelon 9mm fully covered in both Tactical Life, July, August, and Combat Handguns, November, December 2023 issues. Magazine copies and subscriptions can be had at OutdoorGroupStore.com. And don't miss even more related digital content with Rob Latham, as well as top holster picks for Springfield's Echelon series on the new AthlonOutdoors.com super site. Athlon Outdoors is the leading media outlet providing maximum coverage, unmatched expertise for firearms enthusiasts. From personal and home defense to survival, hunting, and the shooting sports, let Athlon Outdoors be your definitive source.